Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Crossplay Podcast. My name is Nikki James. I am one of your hosts here with a couple of my best friends. Starting off the group here, we have Peps. Hello, hello. And my brother Chris. Hey guys, how you doing? So, what is Crossplay? We want to tell you a little bit about who we are. Uh, some people, Crossplay is cross-dressing cosplay. But here, that's not, <laughs> but here that's, not what we're, that's not what we're all about. Here at Cosplay, we're a passionate group of friends and family that care deeply about gaming, wrestling, and all things nerd culture. So we want to discuss those things with you every Tuesday at 9 a.m. here on the Crossplay Podcast. So we're just going to get right into it. Let's uh, let's get a little banter going. Jose, how are you feeling today? Pretty swell. Feeling pretty good. Um, excited to get started. I feel better after that trip to 7-Eleven. I needed a little uh, slurpy action. Yeah, it's been getting really, really hot. I'm not used to it living around here. It's definitely the hottest day of the year so far, and hopefully it stays the hottest day of the year. So <laughs> we're going to get right into it. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have heard, but uh, we have a website now that we're posting all of our blogs and news articles and things like that. Um, you'll be able to find links to the podcast, like the one you're listening to, including the wrestling podcast. Um, that will be published when next week. We're gonna start uh, once a week right now. We're doing every Tuesday at 9 a.m. We're gonna squeeze in a little wrestling. And what we plan to do is, hopefully, in the coming weeks, we're gonna expand to twice a week. We're gonna do Mondays uh, focused on gaming and nerd culture, and Wednesdays we're gonna stick to uh, wrestling. We're just gonna talk pure wrestling. So we will post all those podcasts on the blog as they're made. You can also find them on our Patreon at Patreon.com/slash crossplay and uh twitter facebook we're all over the place yeah um the website uh, to get to it for now i don't know is this changeable or is this the website it's gonna right for right now it's the website we're gonna eventually get a custom url and change right. it so right now we have uh it's nikki james studios dot wordpress dot com and there you're gonna be able to find like i said all of our uh news articles blogs uh links to uh the podcasts and um, we're going to go ahead and get into a couple of the stories that we have on here. Um, well, last night I was, of course, playing some Overwatch. Pepsi, you play any uh, last night? Quite a bit last night, yes. Were you, uh, what else were you doing on the Xbox? Did you, uh, I saw you were on YouTube. I was on there a lot, yes. I was uh, on there watching the 24-hour uh, live streams of uh, King of the Hill, actually. Are you an EA Access member? Are you an EA Access uh, member? I am not, no. Okay. Well, I happen to be, and so I was playing Overwatch last night, and I got no. this notification that said the galaxy is has now expanded, or is now has just gotten bigger, so I thought that was weird, so I opened it up, and it turns out if you're an EA Access member, uh, EA has just given you all the DLC, so that's awesome, because there was a couple I hadn't played, um, like the Bespin one and the Death Star, so oh, I'm excited right. to get that started this weekend. That's good for people that, you I know, think, I think you have it actually, Nick. Do I have EA access? I believe you do still. Oh, I might. <laughs> That's one of those things I signed up for and just kind of let it roll. Right. Um, it's For me, I kind of feel like it's one of those too little, too late things for me personally. I think everyone that's going to uh, play Battlefront has played Battlefront, and I think anyone that's going to keep playing it has been playing it already. Do you think this is enough to it's, maybe bring some people that have fallen off the radar maybe back for a few days the, and maybe get some people uh, it, it hyped will. up for uh, yeah. Battlefront 2 in the fall? for a bit. Yeah, it'll spike, which is it was just natural. But I think at the very most, they're gonna boost sales for the next game. And it definitely is. It's reflective of their policy that they're gonna have um, forthcoming with the next Battlefront game, as far as DLC, free DLC, being free. Yeah. So um, I'm glad that they finally just uh, released it. I actually right away jumped on the Bespin. It was pretty cool looking. The Cloud City. Um, that game looks and sounds anything, amazing. Yeah, if, if it's anything, gorgeous. the graphics on that game are worth jumping on for just a couple hours, you know. Even um, how much is EA Access? EA Access, I believe, is four ninety nine. Yeah, five bucks. Five bucks. Um, uh, I go back on. I go back and forth on I, whether it's worth it or not. I can't get into it. I do use it now and then, but really only for Battlefront and Peggle. Uh, and Peggle and UFC Peggle too. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I use it more than I more than I thought. Yeah, um, see, the thing for me is a lot of those games I own already that I would have wanted anyway, Battlefront, uh, Battlefield, UFC, mm -hmm. I own those games already. So uh, the only thing for someone like me who buys these games as they come out typically, the only thing there for me is Zuma and, you know, the Fish Frenzy or whatever it's called, Feeding Frenzy. Right. So it's just not, it doesn't really uh, speak to me. 
The uh, DLC that they re released, if you remember, includes the Death Star, Vespin, the Outer Rim, and the Rogue One DLC. So uh, the complete Battlefront experience is now available for you on Xbox Live uh, Marketplace if you do have access. You a wrestling fan? You could say that. I'm a big fan of wrestling. It turns out there's a lot of news lately, just in the last 24 hours in the world of wrestling in the WWE. We have Dixie Carter, former owner of TNA, on WWE programming, which is out of this world, something you never thought you'd see. When did this happen? Uh, well, there's a Kurt Angle documentary called uh, WWE 24, part of their documentary series. It's called Kurt Angle Homecoming. And, you know, Kurt Angle had a huge run in TNA after he left WWE. He was there till 2010, maybe, 11. So he, he had a really big run. So they interviewed Dixie Carter, which is crazy because they've always treated her like the plague and just pushed, right. and pushed her as far off as they can. Um, so they have her appearing on a uh, WWE doc. They have the U.S. title changing at a house show, and we've already gotten into that on another podcast. You can go listen to it right now on SoundCloud.com slash crossplay. Biggest piece of news, though, Austin Aries released from his WWE contract. Uh, Peps, what's your initial take on that? I think it's pretty sad, but I understand from where he's coming from why he would want to leave. Um, he's, he's, I believe he's close around to his 40s, and I think him coming to WWE in the beginning was his last hurrah type of spiel. But I don't think that's what WWE was willing to do for him. I don't necessarily think he saw it as a last hurrah. I think he saw it kind of like V. Brian Kendrick when he came back as a, as a chance to, uh, to try again and reach fame in the WWE. Uh, the problem was I think he felt pigeonholed in the cruiserweight division. You and I both know that 205 Live is a dead end. Um, unless you're feuding with Neville... You're in really lame feuds with Noam Dar and Alicia Fox and, you know, know Cedric right. Alexander. And so... How, how was his eye injury affected uh, him, though? Because... Did you see that picture the of his eye? eye? Injury, no, I didn't. I mean, Wait, whose eye are we talking about? It, Austin, Aries. Austin Aries. He posted a picture on Instagram of his eye, and it was After completely then. destroyed. I don't know what happened. I have no idea. What happened? Does anybody know? I, I am not sure myself, actually. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. I just know that after that, he was pretty much relegated to commentary, right? Oh, that's right. He broke his... So it wasn't recent. He broke his orbital oh, bone oh, years right. ago. Right. And that's what put him on commentary. I think he... Uh, you think that changed his uh, path, so to speak? I think he acquired a lot of ring rust while he was out. I've never been a fan of him. Um, when he got back in there... I, he was okay on commentary. Then they started letting him interview people. And he interviewed people in a really bad way just he's bad at interviewing it's hard to explain he would talk about himself too much he would be really aggressive like because he's he, macho he would also use some weird props in his shots his bananas his, yeah his bananas That's... um he, i just i wasn't entertained and when he was in the ring he was at his best but even then he was just okay uh so what's what do you think do you think this is good for austin aries he's still under contract with the wwe so he can't go wrestle for New Japan or, or Global either. Force Wrestling. He, he can go to the Indies. But what do you think... Where do you see him a year from now? A year from now? Probably some champion for a different, you know, um, company. I can totally see that happening. Like but, WCPW or something like that, or Ring of Honor. Yeah. I believe he's been a champion before. In Ring of Honor? In Ring of Honor. According to multiple sources, uh, you know, he was... He requested his release. Um, I think he felt pigeonholed. He felt right. like there was a ceiling. And um, so... After signing with uh, the WWE um, or NXT in January 2016, he's lasted what under a year. Yeah, he well he went in for you know a year, and in a year went from the NXT roster to the main roster, which is pretty impressive. Uh, but still, once he got there, they just he was a victim of the cruiserweight division. If the cruiserweight division wasn't around when he hit the main roster, he would have been on the main roster and been been able to feud with people like Cesaro or people like right. that. Instead, he's stuck with. The jobber division, basically. And I think he's sick of that. So Yeah, I think he... It sounds like he's very unhappy. Guys, what is your biggest gaming regret? Mine was pre-ordering Medal of Honor on the Xbox 360. Medal of Honor Warfighter, I think it was called. It oh, was, uh, it was supposed to be... It was like 2011, I think. It was supposed to be Medal of Honor's return to form. They were coming back to like dethrone Call of Duty... They had so much good marketing and hype around the video about how they interviewed real military people and the CIA was in, into the development of the game and all that. And I pre-ordered it, bought into the hype, waited till midnight, and the game was a piece of crap. It, it, wow. it on every level failed. 
It was bad on every level. The gameplay, uh, matchmaking was horrible. The gunplay, it, it was like Battlefront. There was no recoil to any of the guns. Um, the community was toxic. It just, I never felt so cheated <laughs> while well, for pain for something. So much so that I remember it now six years later. So hmm. that's my biggest gaming regret. My biggest regret is I pre-ordered and not just pre-ordered like the standard edition. I pre-ordered like you know the deluxe edition of Halo Five at the time. What was it called? It wasn't called the deluxe edition. It was like it's some kind of weird like digital, yeah digital deluxe. Or Anyways, something. there was obviously a lot of hype around this game. First game on Xbox or first Halo game on Xbox One. It's not that this was a bad game. This was actually a really you know it was a good game. But for me, at this point, it's ceased to feel like Halo. Um, it just felt like something uh, just a little just just too different. A lot of people will tell you about Halo that, you know, it kind of started falling off maybe after 3. Mm -hmm. um, I, I liked 4 a lot, so I never really felt that, but playing 5 definitely didn't feel like, um, you know, a traditional Halo game. I never got that traditional feeling, and for me, that was a big letdown. I hardly play it at all, so... Was you're talking about Halo Five, right? Was uh, that developed by Bungie or no, four that, three or whatever? That was three four three. Three four three. Yeah. They that took was, their uh, reins on four. And, yeah, yeah, they did a good job on four. Um, so you know, four was. I thought four was great. I mean, especially considering oh, I totally four too. It was it was on the Xbox three hundred and sixty, um, but the graphics you could, you know, <laughs> it pushed it pushed the envelope of what was capable on. That's right, it Last came towards gen. the end of the generation for that 360 era. Right? Yeah, and I remember, what were the enemies called in that one in 4? Do you remember? Oh, um, I can't even think of them right now. The um, I, I can't remember, but they yeah. looked really cool. Um, so, what about you? Uh, regret? I guess purchase. for me, it would have to be... I pre-ordered Destiny 1. Um, I was super hyped about it. I just loved the idea of exploring space. Right. Um, and the story looked pretty rad from what they've shown so far, but... You know that was before I found out they changed a lot of it towards the end of the of the of the uh, development. Um, regardless, I you know waited till midnight, played the whole game. I just sat there right through it and just trained it. So was uh, it you would say it's a different game than what they it's advertised? A lot, it, yeah, it's a lot than what they advertised. But I mean, it did get better uh, towards the end as they as the years gone by when they added new content, this and that patches. Uh, but it just took a while for me. I just had this really deep hated uh, <laughs> thing for Destiny in the beginning because you know I blew quite a bit of money. You know, sixty bucks is quite a bit of drop on a game. Well, so yeah, yeah. You know, you want to get something. You want to be delivered a good experience. Uh, that's not what Destiny One did for me. Yeah, totally get that. So moving on now. Yeah, since we talked about our biggest regrets, how about we have our best uh, games that play, that gave us a surprise that we actually enjoyed it? Nice, keeping Something... it keeping it happy, going the other way with it. Right. I like it. Uh, That's me... a good. You go ahead and go first. I need to think. Actually, that's right. Okay, no, for me, it was. I remember, oh. uh, it was you know one of those things back in the three sixty eras of way many years ago. Um, there was this game I've never heard of called Metro Twenty Thirty Three. Mm, yeah. Um, okay. Going in, I was like, all right, sure, I'll buy it, give it a try. And, uh, and I was pleasantly surprised about the story. It was really good. It was set in this uh, kind of a nuclear holocaust post-apocalyptic world in Russia where you um, play as this character named Artyom. Uh, you're basically one of the survivors. Everyone lives the underground metro area in the Russian subways. Oh, okay. Uh, the world is very populated at first. Is this a spooky game or a uh, first-person shooter, It's right? a first-person shooter. There's, uh, I would say, thriller. There is some spoops, but I, I think it... it it's not more of a horror thing. It's more of a kind of get in your head because mm, they okay. make because they kind of turn into this weird uh, prey esque story towards the end of the game. I don't know if you ever played Prey on the original 360. No, it's one I, of the early I launch Prey. titles. I missed Prey. Prey, uh, Prey was another first person shooter, but that had to do with like aliens and spirits with the Navajos, this and that. Um, <laughs> the Navajos. <laughs> That's like the only Native Americans you could name. <laughs> the, uh, the Washington Trash. Redskins were there. <laughs> it's. it's um, Anyway, yeah, no, it gave me a nice surprise. I loved the world it was in. It, I was uh, totally in it. Um, I love immersion. Immersion. Like yes. Any games you can get immersed in, and that's what uh, are always going to be my me. favorite. I actually, this was a very recent surprise. 
So my brother and I were hanging out the other day uh. playing some games, and he starts. He was like, "Oh, what should we play?" So we're looking through the list, right? And he goes, "Oh, how about Peggle?" Or yeah, Peggle Two. Yeah, Peggle. <laughs> it was Peggle Two. And you rolled your eyes so hard, dude. I you just... scoffed so hard. And the way you described it was not that great either. I described and it as a mom game. It. As a mom, yeah. Game. You know, like feeding frenzy. That's what or, it was. Like, that's, that's probably what the yeah mom game. And then your eyes like almost fell out of your face. Oh uh, yeah, it, it wasn't a good. So, but anyways, I agreed. Um, and right away, I was I was blown away because because of the art style. The art style really huh. grabbed my uh, yeah. grabbed my attention. Um, and kept me looking at all the different animations. Peggle is a game where um, I guess you can kind of compare it to like Bubble Bobble, except it's I guess reversed. Yeah, it's a little In similar. A yeah, you're, you're um, shooting shooting balls, balls out of yeah. a little gun yeah. that you <laughs> um, So you got orange balls and you have blue balls, which is unfortunate. Um, so yeah. But <laughs> got to clear all the blue balls. Yeah, There's some green you, balls. Blue, yeah, but the. Objective is to get rid of all the orange balls, if you can. And also, important to note, is that every time you play a level, if you fail and have to do it again, it shuffles all the orange balls. Right, so oh, it adds right. that you can't... At some point, really trying to build a strategy, because it'll reset the next turn. A little twist to the game is, you um, for each level, you're given a little... I don't know what to call them, creature, or... Oh, no, you know what they call them? They call them masters. Um, yeah. So you're given a master, and when you first start off, you're given this... Um, this what is it a unicorn or a horse you're it's given a, a, uh, oh, it's unicorn? a unicorn it's yeah a unicorn. unicorn and he's got the super guide ability yeah so you're given this unicorn with like this rainbow colored mane and looks like he has like constipation when you're like when he's <laughs> the characters you, in that power. game emote so yeah. much um so I, I believe his power is um oh gosh it essentially does like an auto aim type of thing when you release the right. ball and, and the ball goes in a direction you where get, you get the most points. You get a second. Don't yeah. you get a second? Well, no, he does the, the, he does the super guide yeah. where super it'll guide. show you you're going to hit and then it'll show you where it's going to go after it hits that. Yes. So very, it's good very for precision. Useful. Yeah. You can uh, add up points that way. Anyways, there's like six or seven different uh, mo or masters, I believe. Anyways, the game is completely addictive. That night I went home, I installed it, and uh, it was fun. <laughs> I remember the first time... I played Peggle. I, I played it for about eight hours straight. Um, for me, my biggest gaming surprise, pleasant surprise, was Life is Strange. I talk about this game constantly. Played the trial. I don't oh. think we've done an episode where I haven't you talked about this believer. game. I played the whole game with Jose, too. It's they. I didn't know anything about the game. I believe the first episode was free, and it just took me by surprise. The, the art style emerged with the music choices yeah. and the story created a world that once again, I just got immersed in so fast and hard yeah. that I Im immediately bought the next four episodes and pressed through them all. And I played it with Zach. I played it with you a few weeks ago. I believe they had a demonstration for the sequel at E3, right? The sequel, yeah. The sequel's a... It, it, it's interesting. I'm a little worried. Different developer, different hmm. voice actor for the main character, Chloe. Oh, wow. Right. Uh, because the, uh, her, the voice actors union is on strike. So she can't, even though she wants to. Um, so I, I'm... Cautiously optimistic about uh, Life is Strange. It's good to keep your uh, expectations low. Uh, so yeah, let's move right on now from that, uh, guys. What are your what are your favorite '90s sitcoms? Let, let's let me narrow that down. What was the best '90s sitcom in your opinion? The best. Okay. I guess for me it would have to be Family Matters. <laughs> I, I, Family Matters. I love Steve Urkel. He was like the funniest thing to me when I was a kid. Every night, really? TGIF, yes. Officer Carl Winslow. Yeah, uh -huh. that interaction, <laughs> Carl Winslow with the C. Verkel, chasing step. after his daughter, trying yeah. to bone her. Yeah, <laughs> that's all he ever. He was a horn dog. Did oh, that Family Matters is a spinoff. I did know uh, that. I, of I'm not sure of the show, but I, yeah, I'm not sure myself. Of I think Laverne and Shirley. Really? Uh, yeah. Sure. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. We can look it up. I don't remember seeing I think, any I people. I think you of, might be. Uh, I think you might be of, getting uh, that confused with of, Jamie Foxx. Uh, of tone. Sorry, not <laughs> color Jamie tone. Fox. Exactly. I think you might be getting that confused with uh, the Wayne's Brothers. No, the Wayne's Brothers is also a uh, spinoff of the From Jeffersons. Like... I think. <laughs> Which is. I don't know. We're so <laughs> much of the Simpsons. Oh my God! The Family Matters was a spinoff of The Walking Dead. Okay, we're, anyway, we're that was mine. Anyway. So, Family Matters, yeah, Family Matters was awesome. It ran nine seasons. I don't know why I know that off the top of my head. 
but fan. I do. I'm Super a fan. I'm a big <laughs> fan. I think one of us saw Carl Winslow in real life one time, like at a parade. We <laughs> at a parade? I don't know if you remember that. I think it was me, me and uh, Danny. Uh, Do you just have recovered memories of Carl Winslow? <laughs> he wasn't wearing his Winslow fit, but <laughs> he wasn't, he wearing, wasn't, he wasn't wearing a police officer. Exactly. <laughs> um, what about you, Chris? Oh gosh, favorite. I'm gonna have to go with, you know, friends. So, yeah, that's a, that's a tough da, 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 one da, da, to argue. Da, da, da. I mean, yeah, it's I, hard because I don't want to initially agree with you because I didn't discover Friends till 2015. <laughs> so yeah, and at, and at that point, I think your favorite was How I Met Your Mother. I like How I Met Your Mother a lot. Um, yeah, maybe this would be a great so sitcom. Probably not my response. favorite sitcom of all time. Well, it's not a '90s sitcom. Yeah, so. right. It's not '90s, but yeah, you didn't discover it way after the '90s. For me, it would be really tough. It'd be close. for me. It was after the '90s too, though. What Friends? When I discovered Friends. But what about something you grew up watching in the '90s? How about that? Watching in the night. You got your King of Queens. You got your Home Improvements. Home Improvements, good. I love. <laughs> got your love, Mad love About You. <laughs> Married so with Children. What was a good qualifies show. a sitcom? Just like the a time? situational comedy where there's usually a studio audience. It's usually a one or three camera setup. Think Does animation set. count? No, animation's no. not a sitcom. Um, Married with Children is another good show. Married with Children. Oh, you know what I mean. King of Why Queens. Why don't you go ahead? Let okay. me uh, let me just ponder this for a second. Um, my favorite '90s sitcom, probably just because of the watchability of it, is. Ah, this is such. I don't want to oh, say it because I don't want it to go down in the records, and then later when I say something else, uh, it's no, no, no. <laughs> that happens a lot, people. It's gonna be Home Improvement. Home Improvement. I've, as an adult, watched that uh, television show all the way through, multiple times, and I it never gets old. I love that, it. That really was a good show. It really reminded me a lot of us growing up. The you and I, three boys, the three, the three boys, and uh, that's about it. We didn't live in Michigan. <laughs> That's, dad, that's didn't host, dad didn't host the tool show. <laughs> he wasn't incredibly Or handy. know how to work a wrench. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Home Improvement, we could put that on. You and I did that, didn't we? Like a month ago, we were drinking one night and put on Home Improvement and watched it for hours. <laughs> oh, we watch a lot. I mean, you're right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I guess we all got Family Matters, Friends, and Home Improvement. Jose, right, what right, do you got right, next? Right, you got the last the topic of the day. One. We're going to start wrapping it up here in a couple of minutes, um, folks, but let's do one last topic. Jose? I guess, you know, I just want to talk about a favorite road trip of mine that I took with you to uh, San Francisco for an I office party. I wasn't there, party. so I'll just sit back here. Well, no, he was not. He, he was not there. Wah, wah. <laughs> uh, somehow, uh, oh, Nicky James, uh, he, uh, he, I believe he was an admin for a... Uh, for like a forum, I believe, for a fan. Yeah, I ran a like a fan forum for the band Lifehouse. And you made friends with the. Uh, and Gatu. I made friends with the people that like owned the internet company that ran it. That host the host. Don't you have a Lifehouse tattoo? I do. I have a Lifehouse tattoo that I'm incredibly proud of. One day, our... one day he's gonna post a picture, and uh, I'll get it. Maybe after this podcast. I'll post it right now. I'm not afraid. <laughs> you can't. You can't try to put shame on me for my Lifehouse tattoo. I love your Lifehouse tattoo. You were committed. Yeah, I love it. Anyways, Anyways. sir. <laughs> We're running out of time. What were we saying? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you made friends with that. Uh, with the yeah, the, yeah and their and their the offices company. were in San Francisco, in downtown right. San Francisco. So they invited us over there for a party, and we made the trip. That was a fun trip. We saw some notice uh, some really weird things on the road, like some large cutouts of like big booty old women and animals. Yeah, yeah and there mules. was really weird uh, wow. farmer art along the highway. Yeah. <laughs> it was really just And off. I guess that time when we were traveling, it was during a, a, a butterfly migration path? We murdered about 7,000 butterflies. Yeah, it's like someone kept was, throwing a wow, bunch of spicy brown enough. mustard packets into our windshield. <laughs> yep, <laughs> and that's what it looks just like. bits of legs and wings. It's like, oh, It, it looks like it someone was, was throwing scene. mustard on our windshield. <laughs> wow. And then to make it better, I decided I should turn on the windshield wipers. That and instead of cleaning it, it, it just smeared it, butterfly viscera it blinded all over. We way. couldn't see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awful. That and then a horrible uh, scene. What else? Anything else um, interesting happened on that road trip? Uh, oh, fun thing. Oh yeah. Once we got there, there was that one. Um, when we were trying to look for the place, uh, at the time you, for, for whatever reason, you decided to carry your pillow. So we were walking the streets, not knowing where. We, I think we were lost. But I was we were, walking in a down mission, feeling insecure. You know, I was yeah. walking down Mission Street <laughs> with a purple pillow, 
under my arm. And, you know, <laughs> lost as hell. I'd never been in such an intimidating city at that point in my life. So having looking around and seeing like thirty story buildings all around you was incredibly intimidating. Yeah, I needed a pillow. You just needed. That's the case. I needed to knock out yeah. somewhere real quick. To it was all too overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we got there, we made it to the party, uh, flash forward at the party when we were just, you know, getting our drink on, conversing with the uh, local hood rats. <laughs> not, well, not really hood rats, office rats, sorry. I'm There's a, no hood rats in San Francisco. No, I remember this one time, well, at the party, you were just really so wasted, uh, you had to hold on to my shoulder, and you leaned into me, asked, and told me to be serious if yeah. the room was <laughs> tilting. I was like, Jose, who's tilting Is this building room? building tilting. Jose, who's tilting this I, room right now? Uh, you were just so <laughs> concerned about it, and I just... There had know. been a, a lot of Jaeger that night. Oh, Jaeger. That's when I was a young man. Oh, I remember you kept telling me the building's up to code, and I was like, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> do you have paperwork? <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually took... The only road trip I ever took... I'll make this quick. Um, I bought tickets to WrestleMania 21. It was going to be at the Staples Center. Uh, Nick's never been to WrestleMania. I have. Check yep. one, two. He got to see Hulk Hogan from 900 feet away, guys. <laughs> 900 feet closer than you. That orange puffball. Anyways, <laughs> I had to make the trip from Ventura, California to Fresno, basically overnight, to get the tickets and be back in time for WrestleMania. Um, and because I was such a super fan at the time, I did it, and it was awesome. No crazy uh, farmer art, though. So you're basically... I did have a best friend that was with me that was no longer with us that threw up three times. So you're basically telling me the story to rub it in my face that you've been to WrestleMania. Check one, two. Check one, two. So <laughs> <much>. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for joining us here on the Crossplay Podcast. If you have any questions, topics, comments, anything like that, talk to us on Twitter at Crossplay Pod. If you like what you've been hearing and you would like to help us get bigger, better, and louder, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash crossplay. And don't forget to stay up to date with all the latest nerdy news you need to know about at nickyjamesstudios.wordpress.com I've been Nicky James he's been Chris he's been Peps well, you guys have any parting words for our friends? Um, no, thanks for listening guys, it was fun thank you so much guys, we'll see you next time become a patron at patreon.com slash crossplay find us on twitter at crossplaypod and on instagram at crossplayentertainment Read the blog at nickyjamesstudios.wordpress.com and join the discussion on Facebook at facebook.com slash crossplayentertainment.